HTML and JavaScript. In this section, we will dive into QML and its syntax and explore its compatibility with JavaScript code. We'll get an introduction to the syntax of QML first, followed by QML modules. Then we finish this section with JavaScript in QML. QML syntax. We will learn some QML syntax basics, namely import statements, object declarations, and QML object types. Let's launch Qt Creator and open the project from previous videos, or create a new one if you like. In the main.qml file, the first few lines on the top may be new to some. The import statements, working in a similar way to C++ include directive. Here, we see built-in version namespaces being imported. You can also import files from relatively specified directories and JavaScript files as well. In the main.qml file, these three import statements install object types, JavaScript resources from these modules into the global namespace. Optionally, you can use the as keyword to specify a qualifier. which serves as a local namespace identifier. When you do that, the object types and JavaScript resources provided by this module will be installed into the local namespace instead of the global one. In this case, if we do this, Qt Quick will be object types and resources from Qt Quick 2.7 will be installed into Qt Quick namespace instead of the global one. Now, Let's go on reading this QML file. The root object is an application window. How does it get declared? An object declaration consists of the object's type name, which is application window here, followed by a set of curly brackets. Then all attributes and child objects are declared within the brackets. The attributes are defined in a JSON-like format but you don't use comma after each statement. Optionally, semicolon may be put, just like in JavaScript. It may look more concise for objects that only have a few attributes to put them in one line with semicolons separating them. For example, we can put the label object in the page into one line. The child objects are declared just like normal properties. It's very intuitive to see the parent-child relationship in this QML file. To name an object, we just need to assign the name to its ID property. As you can see, the current index property in swipe view is bound to tab bar's current index. After all these different object types you've seen, you might wonder what defines an object type. Built-in object types are provided by Qt Quick module. The object types, like application window, swipe view, are all built-in types from Qt Quick module. Meanwhile, the object type page1 is a custom QML object type Thus, is defined through QML documents. A QML document defines a type identified by file name minus the extension .qml. Therefore, here we have a page1.qml file, which exists and visible to the QML engine. Hence, the type page1 may be used in the QML application. This is the most common way to define a custom QML object type. In the case where the custom types are only used once, you may use the component type to create it within a QML document anomalously. In the case where the custom types are only used once, you may use the component type to create it within a QML document anonymously. For C++ developers, 
You may register types defined in C++ through the API provided by Qt QML module to provide custom QML object types, usually the performance-sensitive tasks or underlying low-level libraries may be done in C++ plugins and exposed as QML modules in this 